very good morning dear student we are back again for the second guest lecture of today's uh, let me welcome dr shine sayad ma'am very warm welcome to you ma'am for this guest lecture uh, it's indeed my privilege and i've been feeling honored in introducing dr shine sayad ma'am uh, she is working as an assistant professor with Sh shri shivaji science college nagpur she has been teaching experience in engineering and science college she has received manf national fellowship for regular phd work and she has published more than 20 research papers in reputed international and national journals and conferences proceedings in india and abroad one of the book chapter has been published in advanced nano material and nanotechnology springer publication her area of research is lead free piezoelectric material and synthesis of nano material so ma'am i have given a very brief introduction regarding you uh, but the resume says very 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 big achievements of yours uh, since uh, due to time constraints i am been restricting myself here so without wasting much of your time and the student time because they have been waiting for you uh, kindly switch over to the presentation over to you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am for the wonderful introduction a very good morning to the students first of all i would like to thank the principal of anjuman college of engineering and technology and the organizers of the today program for inviting me and for giving me a chance to be interact with such a wonderful student of anjuman college of engineering and technology so shall we begin with the presentation yes ma'am please proceed okay so today yes. we are discussing about the nano science and nano technology okay so what is nano science and what is nano technology we have to discuss the definition and why we are moving towards the nano technology dear student as you know the world is going towards the nano technology you are aware that most of the research they are going on searching of the nano materials and developing a technology which is based on the nano material so in the present era, uh, era nanotechnology gets now much attention of all the researchers as well as industrial person okay so these are the content of my presentation today we are discussing about the why we are going to what nano structure what are nano structure what are the properties of nano structure and what are the applications of nano structure okay so first we will discuss about the nanotechnology so dear student nanotechnology itself consists of the two words one is the nano and another one is the technology so uh, we are familiar with the technology term uh, so what is nano first we will discuss nano so nano is a unit uh, meter scale is a unit of meter scale which is of the order of 10 to power minus 9 so any material or uh, anything which is having the dimension in the range of 10 to power minus 9 then we can say that the material is nano material or the particle is nano particle okay so this nano word is having image from the greek word nano which is means a dark dark means extremely small object okay and one nanometer is equal to one billion of a meter and technology is nothing but the making uses and knowledge of the tools machine and technique in order to solve a problem or perform specific function so we can say that nanotechnology what is nanotechnology we can combine this nano and technology as nanotechnology is the understanding and control of matter at dimension of roughly about 1 to 100 nanometer okay what is nanotechnology understanding and controlling of matter at a dimension which is roughly 1 to 100 nanometer why at that dimension the material shows a novel application okay so nanotechnology again is a group of emerging technology in which we are, structure of the matter is controlled here the term is control we are control the matter at the nanometer scale to produce the novel materials and the device which is useful and have a unique properties then nanoscience again nanoscience is a branch of nanotech nano nanomaterials which can be considered as a convergence of most of the branches of science 
with just like physics, material science, biology, chemistry, etc. So in nano science, what we are doing, we are doing with dealing the manipulation of materials at the atomic or molecular scale. In nano science, we understanding the basic uh, science behind the nano materials at the atomic scale, the basic physics behind them, the basic chemistry behind them, how they are chemically active or inactive. All of these things we are under, uh, list, uh, we are studying in nano science branch. Okay. And there is a relation between nanoscience and nanotechnology. The foundation of nanotechnology is the basic science. Whenever you are understanding the basic science, you are, whenever you are familiar with the basics of uh, at the atomic scale, then you can implement them technologically. So the foundation of nanotechnology, we can say that is the basic science. You have to understand the basic physics, basic chemistry, basic biology behind them then you can uh, use that material for a particular technological application. Okay, so here you have seen a figure. What is this figure? Earlier people are considering the thickness of a nano size dimension as a thickness equivalent to human hair. What is the thickness of human hair? So human hair has a thickness of 80,000 nanometers. Okay, and 80,000, so in this figure, you can see this is a carbon fiber, which is having a dimension 1 micrometer. And this is a thickness of human hair, which is about 80,000 nanometer. So can you compare the thickness of human hair with the nano size dimension? No. So because it is very much smaller than the thickness of our human hair. So you can say, how small is the nano material? How small is the nano dimension? Okay, so question is arises why we are moving towards the nano scale? We have bulk level, we have micro level, we are uh, measuring the parameters, so we are developing the materials at the macro level. So, why we are moving towards the nano level? First important thing is that we have to reduce the size. Earlier, agar aap, agar aap when we are the computer, supercomputer are developed, they are having a size of a big room. Nowadays, it is on your lap, laptop. So there is a drastic change and how is drastic change come? It comes from the change in the size. Okay. So size is very important. Nowadays pupils are going to reduce the size as, as, uh, as small as you can uh, under your palm. Just like our mobile phone. Okay. So what you can say that the material shows us remarkable properties of the material at nano scale. Okay. And that unusual physics chemical and biological properties emerge in a material at nano scale. The properties of a material change dramatically. There is a dramatical change when you are moving from bulk particle size, bulk in this is uh, uh, or we can say micro or macro. Agar aap macro or macro level se suddenly aap nano level pe jam karte ho, jo uske macro properties si, it gains suddenly change. Either they are enhancing or they are decreasing. Okay, so it is depending upon your application. Aapko us application mein uske properties ko decrease karna hai ya increase karna hai. In nanomaterial, both the things are possible. Okay, the diverse properties of a material often change dramatically with nano ingredients. And the cause of this drastic change is goes to the world of quantum physics. Okay, so or whenever we are dealing in nanometer scale, we have to move towards the atomic scale. Okay, and at, at the atomic scale, the classical physics does not vary, and we have to move towards the quantum physics. Okay, so the basic behind the nanotechnology or the change in the properties of nanotechnology is goes to the discovery of quantum physics and complete understanding is based on quantum physics. So how quantum physics is important? The quantum physics explains uh, the uh, behavior of material at the atomic scale. Okay, so the properties of material can be different at the nano scale because of the two reasons. One reason is your surface area. Surface area, uh, it is anything, any reason behind the change in properties were first attributed to the large surface area provided by the nano materials. Nano materials having large surface area as compared to the volume. Okay. And because of the large surface area, more number of atoms were present at the surface. And because, and that, that makes the surface more active. 
for if you uh, for example if you consider uh, one atom or one molecule one molecule have how many number of atoms it is roughly nearly equal to avogadro's number that is 10 to the power 23 atoms per centimeter cube if suppose material has a density such a density of 10 to the power 15 now i have to check how many number of atoms will be present if i choose a cube of 1 nanometer dimension okay so if i choose a 1 nanometer dimension cube among them there are total number of atoms present in that cube will be 100 okay 10 to the power 15 Plus ten to the power nine is ten to the power twenty-four minus ten to the power twenty-two, so we are getting hundred atoms. So how many number of atoms we are present? Hundred. This is surface density ten to the power fifteen, so and we are calculate the number of atoms which are present on the surface. Out of that hundred will be sixty. So there are sixty number of atoms we are present at the surface, and remaining forty we are present at the volume volume surface. Okay. So more number of atom will be at the surface. It means the more number of energy is at the surface. So surface is highly active. So whatever the external reaction or action is taking place, this this surface atoms will respond to that uh, stimuli very instantly. And this make the properties retained in the properties from macro to nano scale. And another effect is our quantum size effect. Uh, so quantum size effect begin to dominate the behavior of matter at the nano scale, particularly at the lower. Where this quantum quantum size effect will not play a very important role at the macro level, it play a very important role at the nano level. So what is the two reason why we are moving? Uh, why the nano material showing the drastic change in the properties? One is your surface area. Nano materials having large surface to volume ratio. and second is the quantum size effect because of quantum size effect there is a confinement of electron electron confinement occurs electron confinement se aapke energy band jo band gap hai energy band jo hai wo discrete hote confined hote hai and because of that there is a change in the properties of the material so why we are moving again size is a material property You very well know that very example of gold, which uh, we have seen. What is the color of gold? It is yellow. But we are attracting towards the color. So can gold be of pink color, red color? Okay, बहुत मजा है ना अगर आपको gold के color changes मिलेंगे, so we can wear a different different colors of gold uh, every day. Can it be a possible? Yes, it can be a possible. Whenever we are synthesizing a gold material. at nano scale they are showing the color varying from pink to red okay so with the change in size color of the material is changing because they are showing the different optical properties that is there so we, it means that size is a material property the material ka jo size rahega uske upar hi wo apni property kya karega show karega so size is a material property which gain an attention of the researcher to be work in the field of nano materials and nano technology we will start with the history of nano technology we have heard the term nano technology from last 2 decades 3 or 10 decades so earlier it was present or not the name so and we have seen various examples of nano materials in asian history First is this is the Lycurgus cup, which is a four-century Roman glass cup. These cups shows a dichroic effect. What is dichroic effect? Dichroic effect is nothing but the splitting of visible light into the spectral wavelength. It is quite different from. Again, this question. Again, this question. Maybe after white, light comes out. Oh, then color is different. Color is different. Okay. In this way, yeah, yeah, but dichroic effect. Or the particular visible light is. Uh, dispersed in a particular wavelength. Okay, not all wavelength in a particular wavelength. So earlier at that time the fabrication was unclear. Just we have seen a magic that it is a green in color. Whenever its light is incident on it from outside or from inside, it shows the red color. So it is a magic at that time, and the process is still unclear. But it is seen that 
this glass showing this effect because it is consists of gold or silver nanoparticle which is it, which is in colloidal form is immersed in the glass throughout the glass and because of that colloidal silver and nanoparticles it shows this type of dichroic effect okay so like uh, so the nano materials has an asian history it is found in history various example is uh, found in history uh, another example you can say that uh, we have seen the romans right and when we see the pictures of roman we are seeing that they are, they are uh, color here they are having the some layers of coloring here so they use at that time they are using the sulfide nano crystals for uh, coloring their hair so the nanotechno materials has an asian history so after that the various examples are present but in 1959 the nanotechnology was first invented by richard feynman where in his conference he said that there is a plenty of room at the bottom for by which he can mean that there could be a possible to manipulate the individual atom properties okay there is a possibility to manipulate the properties of the individual atom okay and the richard feynman were considered to be the father of nano science okay so what is nano material what is nano science why we are moving towards the nano material who this what is the how, uh, history and discovery of nano material we have seen now we are going towards the class Application of nanomaterials, which is based on the dimension. Okay, so on the basis of dimension, nanomaterial can be classified at zero dimension, one dimension, two dimension, and three dimension. It's totally because based on their dimension. So they are having different shape: quantum dust, fluorine, gold nanoparticles. It comes under the category of zero dimension. Nano rod, nano sheet, nano fibers. It comes under the category of one dimension. a thin film thick film uh, comes under the category of two dimension and then array of polycrystalline material and dimers liposomes it comes under the category of three dimension so all of these shapes are different because of the change in dimension we can classify the nano material on the basis of their morphology or the appearance it can be single or multiple nano tubes they can be called as a fluorine if they are having this type of shape they can be called as a nano shells if you are having two different metal one inside a spherical and other another is the covering a just egg like shell so we can call them as a nano shell material they can have shape of dendrimers they can be quantum dot or they can be nano shell. so depending upon their dimension we can classify that as one dimensional two dimensional or on the basis of their structure we can classify that them as fluorine dendrimers or nano okay so classification may be based on the dimension or based on the appearance or we can say appearance is nothing but the morphology agar aap nano materials mein deal karte ho so you are very and you are uh, hearing the term morphology so morphology is nothing but the appearance or shape of the nano particle is called as the morphology okay so what is zero dimension nano structure so these are the nano particles just like fluorine which have all the three dimension on the nano scale जो तीनों डायमेंशन रहेंगी जैसे डायमेंशन कौन से कंसीडर करते हैं हम एक्स वाई एंड जेड ओके अगर आप थ्री डायमेंशन कंसीडर करते हो तो वी आर हैविंग थ्री कोऑर्डिनेट एक्स वाई एंड जेड सो दीज आर नैनो पार्टिकल्स व्हिच आर हैविंग ऑल द डायमेंशन इन नैनो स्केल ओके एंड इफ वी आर हैविंग टू यूज व्हाई वी आर सिंथेसाइजिंग द मटेरियल इन जीरो डायमेंशन इफ बिकॉज वी नो दैट इफ यू नैनो क्रिस्टल टू बी यूज फॉर ऑप्टिकल और अनदर एप्लीकेशन व्हाटएवर इज द एप्लीकेशन their size must be equal to that physical quantity okay just like if you are using for optical application this uh, this must be equal to the drip of your wave which is of the order of 0.5 to 20 nanometer for semiconductor material okay so we have to synthesize the material which having the diameter in the range of 0.5 to 20 nm okay so the, so we are moving towards the so synthesizing the particle in zero dimension to achieve a desired application okay so whenever the size of the particle limit uh, exceeds this limit they offer a uh, additional quantum optical features such as they have size dependent emission color and increase in the emission intensity okay 
So here is the figure which represents the zero-dimensional sulfur nanomaterials. It can be synthesized by the different methods: hydrothermal, solvothermal, mechanical synthesis. These are all the synthesis methods. And here you can uh, take in your mind if we are moving to synthesize the zero-dimensional nanomaterials. So what are the properties? They cannot be settled on. You cannot be seen in the form of a powder. They are completely observed when you are you are using particular XRD or scanning electron microscope. High, uh, scanning electron microscope is an instrument which is used to see the nanoparticles. Okay, because it is uh, about the optical range. Okay, so if you are using scanning electron microscope at that time, uh, so you have to synthesize the material mostly by using the grain synthesis. Method. Okay, so green synthesis method is very suitable for synthesizing material in zero dimension. These are the application of quantum dot. It can be used for quantum dot uh, TV in, in display. It can be used in cancer therapy. It can be used for uh, in laser. And so it reduces the size. It reduces the brightness. It reduces the efficiency of the uh, particular device. Then we are having one-dimensional nanometers. We can say that one-dimensional actually corresponds to the material having one dimension beyond the nanoscale. Its का जो एक dimension रहेगा, it's having length greater than its width. एक दो out of two dimension, one dimension जो रहेगा, वो out of the नैनो स्केल रहे एग्जाम्पल क्या है आपके कार्बन नैनो ट्यूब होलो नैनो स्ट्रक्चर रेसिकल नैनो स्ट्रक्चर आपके पोरस नैनो स्ट्रक्चर ऑल ऑफ दिस अंडर कम्स अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ वन डायमेंशन और जिस डायमेंशन में हम उसको सिंथेसाइज करते हैं या फेब्रिकेट करते हैं उस डायरेक्शन से उस डायमेंशन से उसकी अप्लीके वो पर्टिकुलर अप्लीकेशन के लिए हम उसको क्या करते हैं यूज करते हैं तो दीज आर दप्लीकेशन ऑफ नैनो मटीरियल वन डायमेंशन नैनो स्ट्रक्चर दे कैन बी यूज On, in lithium ion battery or sodium ion battery. So in this lithium ion battery, sodium ion battery, आपका जो conduction charge carriers क्या है ions. So so, so ions required a large space to move from one point to the another point. So for that we are using the generally porous one dimension ion structure or we can use the hollow one dimension ion structure. Okay. For hybrid capacitor we need a dense particle. So the particles in porous ion structure can be used for Hybrid supercapacitor and supercapacitor application. Okay, so what this diagram represents, or earlier diagram represents, the dimension depending upon the dimension, there is a change in the application. Okay, and the two-dimension nano structure, uh, uh, simple, they are having transverse dimension larger than 100 nanometer, but the thickness is below 5 nanometer. Okay, so we can say that in two-dimension nano structure. Uh, the two dimension is outside the nanoscale, but one dimension is single or few atomic layer thick. Okay, examples. आपने देखे आपके graphene sheet. Uh, these are the example of two dimension nanostructure. Why two dimension nanostructure shows the enhancement in their properties? Because whenever they are having a sheet like structure, so they are having intra level strong intra level covalent bonding and weak intra layer van der Waals bond. Okay, and this bonding make a change, drastic change in the properties of the material. For example, if you are considering a graphene sheet in this diagram, this diagram represents the bent structure of a graphene uh, at a bulk level. This is at the bulk level. This is at the nano level. Okay, what happens when we are moving towards the two, two dimension? There is an increase in the periodicity. But periodicity, which si direction may increase? So, there is in, always in Two direction. So what happened? They the periodic increase in periodicity. जो आपके ये transverse direction में periodicity इसको क्या करती है reduce करती है. इसको reduce करने से जो इसका band structure है पहले parabolic था, it shifted to conical shape. Okay? Because अब periodicity आपके इसी direction में. इस direction में इसकी periodicity नहीं है. Periodicity नहीं है. It means it will reduce it. जो size है इसका है, reduce होके it like act like a cone. So there is a direct interaction between band gap, uh, conduction band and valence band. So what happens? जब आप अगर graphene को two dimensional में synthesis करते हैं, so at that time this shows high conductivity. Now it is clear why graphene shows high conductivity because of the graphene sheet. अगर आप use करते हो, because 
the, there is a change in the band gap or band shape with, with respect to the particle set. Another example is the 3D nanomaterial. So, three dimensional nanomaterials are known as the bulk nanomaterial. There is a difference between bulk material and bulk nanomaterial. Bulk material, those materials which are having the size in micrometer rate. And bulk nanomaterials are those materials which is consist of group of nanowires or group of nanosheets, graphene sheet. And they are consist of fabricated by using nanomaterial, but it is a group or bunch of nanomaterials. That's why it is called as the three dimensional nanomaterial. Okay. So they also, they are composite nanomaterials or bulk nanomaterials. So in this, we are not confining the dimension, all the three dimensions that it should be in the nanoscale. They can be on, uh, beyond the nanoscale. But thing is that the small constituent of that particle or material should be in nanoscale. Okay, so it is an aggregation or uh, we can say that it is a group of nanomaterial. Okay, so we are arranging layer by layer, layer by layer, then it becomes a thick layer. So it, it may, may be in the micrometer range. So can it is, could be called as a bulk material? No, it is a three dimensional nanomaterial because the individual constituent is in having a nanometer size. Okay, so now you have clear why we are classifying the materials on the basis of dimension because they are having different, different applications. How can we, how we have classified on the basis, on the basis we are restricting the dimension in all the three axes, then zero dimension along the one axis, then it is uh, one dimensional, then uh, two dimension and three dimension. So up to now we have clear what is nanomaterial, what are nanomaterial, uh, what is nanotechnology, why we are moving towards the nanomaterials or nanotechnology and how, what type of nanomaterials are present. So throughout the up to jo hum logo ne discussion kiya, throughout our discussion we have seen that there is a change in properties from bulk material, bulk bulk will mean big material, larger size particle as compared to the nanomaterial. And in dono ki property mein kya hai? change aa hai. It means agar ab jo bulk material ko jis tarike se ab jane, jis way mein ab fabricate kar rahe ho, can we fabricate the nanomaterial in a similar way? No. There must be some change between the synthesis of bulk material and synthesis of the nanomaterial. So now we have to understand how the nanomaterials can be synthesized. We have to provide external care, external treatment. We have to use proper instruments so that we can synthesize the material at the nanoscale. So there are two approaches has been used for synthesis of nanomaterials. One is your bottom, bottom up approach. And another one is the top down approach. Okay, as the name suggests, bottom up approach. Bottom up approach, it means we are moving from the atomic scale to the bulk level. And we are dealing with the atoms by atom deposition or ions or molecule deposition, then we are giving certain treatment and they form the nanoparticle. Okay, and top down approach, here we are having the bulk particle and there are the particle which are molecules which are having the micrometer size. Then we are applying some mating, chemical method or crushing. We are crushing the blast particles. Just like if we break stone from a hammer, ko, ko break karte, then it will convert into small, small stones. No, wo convert hota. Usi type se, aap bulk particle ko crush karte, ya by external of mechanical pressure, us pe apply karte, then it will be converted to nanoparticle. Okay. So both the method, we can synthesize the nanomaterials by both the approach, top down approach as well as bottom up approach. So top down approach, uh, it looks like very simple, so though it is a very simple method, but there is lots of wastage. And uh, bottom of the atom by atom, control every parameter as well as it is time consuming. Okay. So, again, uh, the synthesis method can be classified as physical method, chemical method, biological method, hybrid method. So, this classification is based on the uh, which surrounding we are providing, which instrument we are using, which solvents we are using, or uh, which procedure we are using. Okay, so which treatment we are giving, we are giving mechanical treatment or we are giving chemical treatment. On the basis of that, this and this images can be classified as physical method, chemical method, biological method, and hybrid method. Hybrid method is just a combination of these two, either these two or all of these three. 
Okay, so hybrid means mixing of two methods. If you combine the physical method with the chemical method, then it comes under the category of hybrid method. Okay, we will see some of the synthesis method. Uh, one is the mechanical milling, that is a ball milling method. So here you can see a figure. अगर आपको ball milling method को को understand करना है, तो you just visualize the con conventional atta chip. आपकी जो आपने पुराने stories में देखा होगा या earlier time के जो serials में देखा होगा That is आटा से की फ्लोर मिल जो दो स्टोन पे एक स्टोन से आप ऐसा एक पर्टिकुलर एक दादी अम्मा जो रहती है वह ऐसा उसको सर्कुलर प्लेनेटरी मोशन में क्या करती है रोटेट करते रहती है एंड आपको नीचे में उसमें क्या मिलता है आपको को, कोई भी आप अगर वीट डाल दे तो वीट फ्लोर ग्राउंडेड फ्लोर आपको कहा मिलता है एट दी बॉटम ओके सो फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग दी बॉल मिलिंग यू जस्ट विजुअलाइज दैट एंड नाउ यू कैन इजिली अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज दी बॉल मिलिंग It is one of the simplest way of making nanoparticles of some metals and alloys in the form of powder. Any type of metals and alloys you can use that particle having a big size and that can be converted in the form of a powder. Okay, there are many types of mills depending upon their motion. It can be a planetary mill. It can agar wo planetary motion perform karenga then planetary vibration de raha hai to vibratory rod or tumbler. Tumbler is agar up down motion hoga then it is a tumbler milling. Okay, so depending upon which phenomena, rotation phenomena, ap use karenge, uske according wo kya karenge different different type ke ball milling method. Okay, so what happened in ball milling method? Here we are having a ball. These are the balls. Uh, they are uh, heavy balls that are maybe of carbon, carbide, tungsten carbide or steel ball. Okay, and the base of this ball should रोटेशन एट हाई स्पीड अबाउट देयर ओन एक्सिस अपने ओन एक्सिस के अराउंड में क्या करता है ये A rotation perform that time, which is a type of motion, planetary motion. And because of this planetary motion, it exert this balls where material where forced to be against the wall, to the wall of this container. And during the each revolution, this ball get interact with the material, apply a pressure on the material. And during each rotation or number of rotation, this bulk of particle is converted to the small particle. Okay. so it totally depend on how much time you are giving if you are giving more number of time then you are giving more number of fine particles then particle should be nanometer more particle size should be reduced and if you are increasing the speed again the particle size is reduced so depending upon which agar aapko 100 nanometer chahiye 50 nanometer chahiye ya 200 nanometer chahiye so it totally depends upon the speed as well as on the टाइम अगर आप प्रोलॉन्ग टाइम के लिए उसको कंटिन्यूस रोटेशन अप्लाई करोगे देन अगेन द पार्टिकल साइज इज रेडियस टू नैनो दिस इज इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑफ बॉल मिलिंग मेथड या कंटेनर साइज इन सिरकोनिया बॉल एंड इट इज कंट्रोलिंग बाय एक्सटर्नल प्रोग्राम वी कैन कंट्रोल कंट्रोल द रोटेशनल स्पीड एंड टाइम एंड देन वी कैन एंड दिस इज द सेम इमेज ऑफ सेम इज स्कैनिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोबॉ इमेज ऑफ दिस नैनो पार्टिकल ओके सिंथेसाइज बाय बॉल मिलिंग मेथड Another method is the physical vapor deposition method. It is again a mechanical method. So uh, name suggests that physical. We have to apply some physical pressure, uh, physical uh, phenomena. Then uh, that will convert uh, the material which is to be used in the form of a vapor, and then this vapor will deposit it on a particular substance. So in physical vapor deposition, uh, simply we are having the evaporated chamber. So we have to vacuum chamber. In vacuum chamber, we are having a heated crucible. We are heating the uh, heated crucible. Crucible is for just me. We have our material to place. Kar ke. It may be of uh, silica crucible. Silica material is made of that. It can be of uh, alumina. Alumina is made of or it can be of crucible. So crucible is just like a bowl in which we are placing our material. So in this crucible, we are heating the material. Ko heat kar. So either it uh, heat by uh, uh, inserting a high energetic ion of beam. Beam of iron, or it can be heated by uh, tungsten carbide filament. We can heat it with filament. Or high energy, high energy, if we bombard it with iron, we can heat it with material. So, in this 
So physical vapor deposition basically we are heating a material, then on heating it uh, then uh, the atoms or we are, or molecules will evaporate it in the form uh, in the chamber, and then this evaporated we are deposited on the substrate. Okay, so in this we are having the substrate. Substrate is ko bolte where we have to deposit the film. The film used for that either a glass substrate or sakta hai apka. अगर आपको कंडक्टिंग चाहिए तो ग्राफेन सब्सट्रेट भी हो सकता है ओके तो सब्सट्रेट जहां पे आपको क्या करना है फिल्म को डिपॉजिट करना है एंड टारगेट टारगेट यानी जहां जिस पे आपको जो मटेरियल से आपको पर्टिकुलर एटम्स को रिमूव करना है देन इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ टारगेट एंड सब्सट्रेट सो देयर इज अ टू इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इन फिजिकल वेपर डिपोजिशन टारगेट एंड सब्सट्रेट डिफरेंस क्लियर हो गया टारगेट जहां से आपके एटम्स रिमूव होंगे सब्सट्रेट जहां पे आपके एटम्स डिपॉजिट होंगे तो अगर आप ग्लास फिल्म बुलाओ को फैब्रिकेट करोगे देन ये सब्सट्रेट ग्लास का होगा अगर आपको कंडक्टिंग चाहिए तो इसमें भी ग्राफिन का होगा सो डिपेंडिंग अपॉन योर एप्लीकेशन ओके सो पीवीटी प्रोसेस वे आर कैरीड आउट अंडर द वैक्यूम कंडीशन व्हाई वी नीड अ वैक्यूम कंडीशन सो दैट जो एटम्स यहां से इवोपोरेटेड हुए वे दे कैन नॉट बी स्कैटर्ड फ्रॉम द एयर पार्टिकल्स और दे कैन नॉट बी रिएक्ट विद द एयर पार्टिकल्स ओके they have to directly move from this target to the substance therefore we have to require a vacuum condition in a physical vapor deposition method so there are four steps carried out in this process one is evaporation transportation reaction and deposition we will see what is evaporation so evaporation uh, just it is a stage in uh, during this stage a target which is consisting of consisting of the material to be deposited यानी जो टारगेट आपको जो मटेरियल को डिपॉजिट करना है उस पे इज बम्बार्डेड दैट टारगेट मटेरियल इज बम्बार्डेड बाय हाई एनर्जी सोर्स सच एज बीम ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स और आयन ओके सो व्हाट हैपन व्हेन सच बीम ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इज आयन इज बम्बार्डेड ऑन दैट मटेरियल दिस डिस्लॉज द एटम्स फ्रॉम द सर्फेस ओके एंड वेपराइज देम अब आपके एटम इज टारगेट एटम से क्या होगा इवोपरेशन में ड्यूरिंग इवोपरेशन एटम्स इज वेपराइज जब एटम्स यहाँ से वेपराइज हो गए तो दे आर सेकेंड फिनोमिना इज वॉट इट शुड बी ट्रांसपोर्टेड टूवर्ड दी सब्सट्रेट ओके सो वन सेकेंड वन इज दी ट्रांसपोर्टेशन प्रोसेस तो दिस प्रोसेस सिंपली कंसिस्ट ऑफ दी मोमेंट ऑफ वेपराइज एटम्स फ्रॉम दी टारगेट टू दी सब्सट्रेट टू बी कोटेड यानी जिस सब्सट्रेट पे हमें कोटेड कोटिंग करना है तो ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इज अ Phenomena of transportation of volatile या evaporated atom from the target to the substrate. Okay, what is transportation? Transport of atoms which is vaporized from the target to the substrate. Okay, so this process simply consists of the moment of vaporized atom from the target to the substrate. अब ये transportation कैसा होना चाहिए? It should be a straight line so that all the atoms will reach to the target in a short duration it should be in a straight line manner then there is a reaction so reaction sometimes uh, consist of suppose we have to synthesize the film of uh, metal oxide or nitrides or carbon okay so it means abhi hamare sirf metals vapor evaporate hue the vaporize hue the ab abhi film to oxide ki chahiye so it means that metal should be react with oxygen certain oxygen to form the oxide okay or some type of nitrogen gases to form the nitrides or some types of methane gases to form the carbon clear so it also sometimes we want to film of metal oxide nitrides or carbon so in that case what happen uh, there is a reaction process will be carried out and reaction process will be carried out carried out by applying a appropriate gas during the transportation so jab ye yahan se yahan transport ho rahe we are inserting some gases of uh, suppose ऑक्साइड फॉर्म करना है तो ऑक्सीजन गैस नाइट्राइड फॉर्म करना है तो नाइट्रोजन और मीथेन गैस फॉर दिस कार्बाइड अगर कार्बाइड फॉर्म करना है तो मीथेन गैस तो हम यहाँ पे क्या करेंगे इस गैस को इंसर्ट करेंगे एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट इंसर्शन दिस वेपराइज एटम्स रिएक्ट विद दैट गैस एंड फॉर्म अ मेटल ऑक्साइड अ पर्टिकुलर एंड देन दैट मेटल ऑक्साइड वे आर ट्रांसपोर्टेड टू दी सब्सटेट ओके एंड लास्ट इज योर डिपोजिशन मैथड एंड नाउ दी एटम्स विल बी डिपोजिटेड एट दिस सब्सटेट okay so this is the process of coating build up on the substrate surface so depending on your condition jo reaction deposition can occur simultaneously or differently depending upon the condition 
यानी आपका रिएक्शन और डिपोजिशन साइमल्टेनियस भी हो सकता है या, या पहले रिएक्शन आफ्टर डिपोजिशन भी हो सकता है सो इट डिपेंडिंग अपॉन दी कंडीशन विच यू गिविंग ओके so this is all about the physical vapor deposition process these are the advantages it can be deposited with improved properties compared to the substrate material uh, any type of organic inorganic material can be used as well as some type of organic material can be used for in this physical vapor deposition process generally it is deposited in any physical vapor deposition it is environmental friendly and then the electrophilic This advantage is that uh, it is a line of sight technique. Okay, line of sight technique means it is extremely difficult to coat undercut and similar surface features. Okay, so uh, because it is coat, so it depends upon the transportation. So number of atoms reaching the surface is every time is different. So it is difficult to have a similar surface features all the time. It is. Uh, it requires high vacuum. It requires high energy source of uh, ion beam or electron. So the capital cost is very high. Okay, it requires a high vacuum and higher temperature. So it required a skill of it. Okay. So during this uh, physical vapor deposition, large amount of heat is generated, and when large amount of heat is generated, so it required a appropriate cooling system. and the rate of uh, coating deposition is usually quite low okay these are the disadvantage of physical physical vapor deposition method uh, uh, so where whenever we are using a coating purpose in that physical vapor deposition has a uh, wide range of application in aerospace in automotive in cutting tools firearm dyes and molds uh, to improve the hardness and wear resistance and oxidant resistance of a particular uh, device we use the physical vapor deposition coating okay another method is used the chemical vapor deposition method cvd okay so cvd is used to produce high purity high performance solid well, uh, solid material okay so this method is used in semiconductor industry to for produce a thin film it is a hybrid method chemical vapor deposition is a hybrid method and it is used to obtain a coating of variety of inorganic or organic material okay so basic process is simple cd process uh, here is a transportation of reactant which is in the vapor or gas jo aapke reactant hai it is in the form of a vapor or gas towards the substrate ye aapka substrate hai ye gas in hai isme se aapko kya karna hai aapko jo reactant hai either it is in the form of vapor or gas hai इसको आपको इस स्टेप पे क्या करना है डिपॉजिट करना है या ट्रांसपोर्ट करना है ओके एंड दिस सब्सटेट विल बी कैप्ट एट हायर टेम्परेचर सब्सटेट किस पे रहेगा हायर टेम्परेचर ओके नाउ हियर इज अ ब्लैक एम टी सर्कल एंड स्क्वेयर सो द ब्लैक पार्टिकल इज अवर गैसियस रिएक्शन द स्क्वेयर इज दी गैसियस प्रोडक्ट आफ्टर रिएक्शन This crossing is the intermediate product, and he is the the so empty circle is the solid. Phase. Okay, so now we are having a gaseous reactant. It is entering entering in the chamber, chemical vapor deposition chamber, uh, and the, from that chamber, this gaseous reactant we are transported towards the substrate. At the substrate, there is a reaction. Reaction occurs. Cracking of जो भी gaseous reactant है उसकी cracking होगी and it will uh, ब्रेकिंग डाउन होगा ओके जो बाई प्रोडक्ट एंड मेटल प्रोडक्ट में उसमें क्या होगा क्रैकिंग होगा या रिएक्शन होगा ओके सो दे हैव फॉर्मिंग द इंटरमीडिएट बिफोर दैट सम इंटरमीडिएट प्रोडक्ट फॉर्म होंगे एंड देन इंटरमीडिएट प्रोडक्ट वे आर कन्वर्टेड टू दी सॉलिड प्रोडक्ट एंड दे रिलीज अ गैसियस प्रोडक्ट एंड जो बाय प्रोडक्ट इस रिएक्शन में जो कट करके आपकी जो क्रैक करके जो बाय प्रोडक्ट फॉर्म होते इट वैन बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू गैसियस फॉर्म एंड इट विल बी बेस्ट To uh, back in to or uh, to the other side, and only on the substrate we are having the solid product. Okay, so these are this is the basic mechanism of chemical vapor deposition process. Here we are having the gaseous reactants. Gaseous reactants we are react on the substrate. They are breaking down into desirable product, and the byproduct is evaporated uh, in the form of a gas towards the gas, and the uh, main product we are deposited on the substrate. 
there are various type of chemical vapor deposition that can be in plasma and similarly organic chemical pressure so pressure ultra high vacuum similarly aerosol direct liquid injection all of the basic mechanism all this method what is the difference difference is the temperature and their yeah which uh, particular thing we are using for the heat thing depending on that we are having so we can be used for synthesis like of dielectric material they can be used for synthesis uh, film of metals or we can synthesize the film of semiconductor cvd and pvd generally used for the thin film deposition okay these are the apparatus uh, for thermal cvd reactor it is a low pressure rs plasma by by using this apparatus we can synthesize the uh, thin film of uh, by uh, thin film of any inorganic or organic Another process is the chemical process, which is known as the cool gel process. It is commonly used for the synthesis of nano material. Okay, it is uh, so. This term cool gel consists of the two words. Itself, it having two terms. One is your cool, another is your gel. So, what is cool? Cool gel. We say gel. You have seen it. Cool. What is cool? Cool is nothing but the solid particles fluid in a liquid. Any liquid में आपके जब solid particles form होते हैं उसे विदाई विच इस कॉल्ड एस सोल. And gel is a continuous network. Okay, continuous network of a particle with a pore. जिसमें क्या रहेंगे pores filled with liquid. जब वो एक continuous network रहेगा जिसमें वो pores रहेंगे and that pores is filled with liquid then it is called as a gel. और आपके liquid में solid जो flow करते हैं and it is called as a sol. Okay, and sol gel process. We are connecting this solid in a network form, so it is called as the sol gel process. So what happens in sol gel process? There is a first क्या होगा? Formation of stable solid sol sol solution. So starting precursor. हम जब भी तो वैसे मेरे नेटो मटेरियल सिंथेसिस या मटेरियल सिंथेसिस बोलते हैं, तब हम precursor का term use करते हैं. So precursor क्या होते हैं आपके? That is the starting material. जो भी आप starting molecule या chemical use कर रहे हो, that can be act as a a uh, precursor okay so first of all we are using a uh, sol gel process agar aapko use karna hai so we are using metal oxide uh, alkoxide uh, acetate acetate or alkoxide hum use karte hain as a starting precursor in sol gel process okay so we are using proper uh, suppose we are having zinc uh, uh, zinc z and zinc oxide agar aapko synthesis karna hai so you take zinc acetate okay then zinc acetate we are dissolve in a proper solution Where this completely dissolves, and then add, we are adding certain solvent uh, to form a gel. And then first, क्या होगा उसमें there is a formation of stable sol solution. ठीक है? Then there is a gelation. पहले sol form होगा, then उसका क्या होगा gelation होगा. Gelation we have carried out by polycondensation and polysterification reaction. Now by using these two methods, there is a formation of gel. Now that gel uh, have to be converted into a solid form. Okay, so when this gel, uh, there is a term gel aging. Aging means we are uh, we left the gel for two days. It may be for a week, for two days, for a day, or for a month. Okay, so depending upon uh, the uh, during gel aging, there is a phase transformation and Oswald treatment. So it is a time consuming process. So you can give a proper aging treatment. to form a solid mass and solid mass is formed by causing of contraction of the gel network then your gel will dry dry kyu karenge hum to review the liquid phase and which lead the fundamental change in the structure of the gel again we have to some uh, moisture is present in that gel so we have to dehydrate the temperature at at 100 degree higher temperature to remove the moh group which are present in the and to the protect it from rehydration okay then we have the densification and jo aapka particles hua tha densification means pehle wo porous hoga usko aapko compact karna it means densification and decomposition of the gel at higher temperature why to collapse the pores in the gel network and to dry out remaining organic contaminants okay so figure clearly aapko explain kar rahi hai aapne ya metal salt nitrate acetates ko aapne water mein dissolve kiya hai then you are having the complexing agent pdta and citric acid were acts as the complexing agent yani jab aapka ye liquid mein dissolve ho gaya ab aapko yahan sol form karna hai so you need a 
complex in nature so edt is ethylene diamine uh, ethylene di tetramine okay so it acts as a gelation complex in agent sometimes ethylene glycol is also used as a complex in agent it forms the gel okay then we are giving some heating treatment controlling the ph so the process of hydrolysis and condensation is uh, going on and it form a polymeric group so now the it is advantage of soil gel process by giving after this by having different different temperature uh, treatment you have different different shape you can get particle you can get porous membrane you can get thin film you can get nano fibers or you can get dense structure okay yani yahan tak aapke se process same hai just after that aap kis type ka usko thermal treatment dete hain उसके ऊपर आपका क्या डिपेंड होगा उसका डायमेंशन साइज एज वेल एज शेप ओके इफ यू आर ड्राइंग एंड कैल्सिनेशन ऑफ डायरेक्टली ये जो सोल एंड जेल फॉर्म हुआ था पॉलिमरिक सोल का आप डायरेक्टली ड्राई एंड कैल्सिनेट करते तो यू गेट अ पार्टिकल लाइक दिस इफ यू आर गिविंग टाइम ऑफ जेलेशन दिस जेल एजिंग टाइम एंड इवोपरेशन लो टेम्परेचर पे एंड देन यू कैल्सिनेशन इट देन यू गेट दी पोरस मेन and you are giving a time of proper gelation and shaping and it means you are if you are using spin coating method then it they form the thin film if you are using electro spinning method they form a nano fibers or you can uh, get, can get a dense structure okay so see thin film method can generate a different type of particles different size of particles as well as different shape of particles okay. so everything is in your हाइड्रोथर्मल मेथड इज अनादर मेथड इट इज अ वेरी सिंपल मेथड it is used for production of large product large mass product uh, in this hydrothermal process uh, generally we are using salt or acetate we can also sometimes we can use acetate so similarly that acetate first dissolve in water and then dissolve in solid then that solution is kept in a special instrument which is known as the autoclave it consists of a stainless uh, steel or any material which sustain the high temperature So this autoclave is just like your pressure cooker okay so what happen in pressure cooker we are having a ring uh, and then uh, it uh, uh, during heating there is a generation of pressure in similar way uh, this in autoclave when we are heating this autoclave there is a generation of pressure pressure is generated and because of that uh, pressure the internal temperature of the sample changes dramatically okay you are giving lower temperature but the internal temperature is very high so it is useful for synthesizing or dissolving a material which cannot be dissolved at room temperature or or at low temperature okay so in this stainless auto uh, stainless steel autoclave we are having a teflon liner ek teflon ka cup hota hai jisko hum teflon liner bolte and in, uh, inside this teflon liner we are placing the solvent A solution okay so the precursor is dissolved in water so it is hydrothermal process hydro means water thermal means temperature so ab water mein precursor ko dissolve karke thermal treatment de rahe ho so it is hydrothermal method agar aap particular koi solvent mein dissolve karte ho then it is solvothermal process ab do term hamesha sun le listen you are listening always two term hydrothermal method and solvothermal method so difference is that if we are using particular solvent to dissolve the precursor it is solvothermal process If you are using water to dissolve the precursor, then it is a hydrothermal process. Another example, another process is the precipitation reaction. Again, it is a very simple reaction. In this reaction, there is a simultaneous uh, precipitation of more than one atoms or ions. It is a very simple, more simple method is the co-precipitation method. In this, what you do is here you are forming a precipitation. Okay. so in this there is a precipitation of the metal in the form of hydroxy from a salt hum kya karenge we are taking a salt then this salt will dissolve in a water and then we are adding particular base in that 
either NOH or CR. Suppose you have ZNO synthesized surreo, so you are taking zinc acetate. Zinc acetate we have first dissolved in water, and after that you are adding KOH or NOH. Then uh, you are uh, setting a particular parameter uh, pH. Suppose uh, six uh, basic parameter uh, pH eight or nine or eleven. Now the pH if set set, then there is a start of precipitation. The, this method is known as the co-precipitation uh, precipitation reaction. And this process is governed by two completing factors. One is nucleation and crystal growth. First of all, when you precipitate form, or particle form, it acts as a nuclei. And the small particle is formed first. And then small particles are collected and then they start the growth. And then they start the growth. This is the, uh, so, this complete action we are governed by nucleation and growth. Combustion synthesis method. So, we have combustion synthesis method is uh, again a very simple method in which we are having uh, it is a redox reaction between the oxidant and fuel. Oxidant is in the form of nitrates or oxynitrates. Fuel here can be used glycine, citric acid, urea. These are the fuel and each of these having its own burning temperature. Suppose if you are using static acid, so, so burning temperature is, is 220 degrees Celsius. Now what I will do, I will take a nitrate. I dissolve that nitrate in a pot of water. And then adding uh, fuel in a proper ratio, proper ratio, oxygen to fuel ratio. I can take 1 is to 1 ratio. I can take 1 is to 2 ratio. So what ratio will decide? Ratio will decide the auto ignition, how fast auto -ign ignition works. Auto ignition means self heat generation. Okay, so I take a citrate and nitrate solution, then keep that citrate and nitrate solution on a hot plate. Suppose I have used citric acid, I keep it at 220 degrees Celsius for a time. After some time, when a higher burning temperature of citric acid is reached, at that time it starts burning. So, certain there is an exothermic reaction is going on. And during that exothermic reaction, large amounts of heat is present. And because of that heat, the temperature of this uh, internal substance gets changed and there is a evaporation of carbonous gases and product formation. It means that you can synthesize the product of the higher temperature to form another. It can be formed at lower temperature because of the auto ignition or the redox reaction between the oxidant and fuel. Okay, combustion, it means uh, there is an auto ignition, it means burning of burning of components okay so you, earlier you are getting the black product and then after for further uh, temperature they are converted into desired color so how you can synthesize the nanomaterial by using different different methods now you have to compare the properties of nanomaterial with bulk material how many nanomaterials kya hai, nanotechnology kya hai, study kar liya, classification dek liya, then we have to synthesize kar liya. Now we have to understand the physics behind that. Why they are behaving differently from the bulk level to the nano level. For example, you can see optical properties of gold and silver. They can be copper. Only they are having a single color. But nanoparticles has a wide range of color. It can be red, it can be yellow, depending upon their particle size. Bulk particle having size limitation. It can be of in only of this shape. But nanomaterial can be of cube, pyramid, fluorine, rod. Okay, any type of shape can be possible because we are controlled at the atomic level. So we can fabricate any shape of material at the nano scale. With the electronic properties is also changing because of the change in the band. Magnetic properties is also changing as well as mechanical properties are also changing. So why all of these properties are changing we will see uh, in uh, discuss uh, in detail. So uh, what is optical properties? Your optical pro properties, constant properties are just as your reflection, transmission, absorption and light emission. Okay. So, in nanomaterials, all of these properties completely depend on what factor? These properties are completely depend on electronic structure. Okay. And that significantly differs from the various morphology. Okay. So there are two factors increase the energy level spacing. In nanomaterials, one is your quantum effect and another is your surface plasma resonance. Okay. And this is contribute to the size dependent optical properties of 
nano material so you have we have the diagram of optical absorption of gold nano particles so if you are reducing the size from 18 nanometer to 20 nanometer the absorption wavelength was changing you can see this is for 80 absorption wavelength is this and absorption wavelength is this so if there is a change in absorption wavelength obviously there is a change in wave color and because of the change in absorption wavelength the materials appear different in color so it is totally related with the electronic structure uh, of the material another example you can consider zinc oxide zinc oxide is generally used uh, as a uv blocker so if you are having large atom particles they block uv light they can get up like a but they appear by by the way you can get it no nanosite particles they can also block uv light they are very small some people will not visible light so they can not don't get it the matter is getting in your mouth so it appears here so do you like to wear a uh, sunscreen like which appear a uh, white patches or which is clear okay so this is a size dependent properties earlier it is appear as a white color but when you are synthesizing in nano material size it is clear and because uh, this is because of the change in their optical properties and this optical properties is related with the electronic structure okay so in electronic structure we have seen that there is a uh, confinement of if you have seen this diagram this is called the bulk material there is a bulk semiconductor so there is a conduction band and the valence band so there is a continuous band conduction band and valence band at the uh, uh, in the bulk form and they are partially filled and they make the metal, metal electrically conduct as this band here there is a reduction in size as the size is changes the density of bulk material is changes earlier it is energy it is a density of state in this figure in the bulk semiconductor there is a continuous density of state and electrons can be at the any state with the change in energy but if you restrict the dimension ko agar aap 2d mein convert karte ho then they behave like a quantum wave it means there the density of state does not change through continuously with respect to energy it is increasing up to this then it will get constant then increasing then constant then increasing that constant it means electron cannot be if you are increasing the energy electron is confined to be rest in this state it cannot be moved from this state to higher state after that a certain time it can move from this state to this state again constant and if there is a confinement of electron electron cannot be confined from one state to another state during this transition okay so there is a convert it means it has a discrete energy level yeah, again in one dimensional it can density of state increasing then with increasing energy it will always remain constant with increasing it shifts to next level so they and in zero dimensional they are having the discrete energy level so what is happening discrete energy levels are forming okay so the electrons are confining in this energy level and because of this confinement there is an increase in the band gap and this band gap is related with the wavelength by the relation e is equal to h c by lambda so as the energy band gap is changing energy is changing the absorption wavelength is changing and because of the change in the absorption wavelength different colors will appear okay so why gold nano particles having different different color because of the change in particle size because of the change in particle size there is a change in band gap and because of the change in band gap there is a change in absorption wavelength which result in appearance of different color okay and electrical properties of the nano material is also related with the band gap okay and bulk material however we are taking copper as a conductor at a bulk level it will become insulator at the end because there is a separation of the band the continuous band where gets separated in the form of a separate band okay discrete level mein wo discrete ho rahe and then there is a increase of the 
and as band gap band gap and that increase in the band gap make the material from conduction state to the non conducting state okay and it is attributed to the quantum size effect and quantum confinement effect which is bound to be occur when the size is reduced to nano scale okay the electrical conductivity of nano material is generally lower than that of the bulk material because of the increase of band gap energy with the decrease in particle size also the physical properties of the nano material is changes when the size is reduced from nano to uh, bulk to nano and this physical properties is totally related to high surface to volume ratio there are more number of atoms will be present at the surface they provide uh, they are highly reactive and because of that uh, there is a change in the spacing surface pressure is change hoga kyunki energy zyada hai because of that surface pressure is changing and this the result change in the spacing and because of that interatomic spacing is decreases with respect to the size and hence the free surface free energy changes as compared to the volume free energy and then and that change the chemical potential which directly affects the melting point of the material so with decreasing particle size melting point will also decrease this is a melting point of gold particles magnetic properties of the material is highly enhanced in nano material okay why so uh, uh, what are the characteristics of magnetic properties we can check the magnetic properties in terms of positivity retentivity and saturation and these properties were generated in a material because of the domain wall domain aap logo ko pata hi hai jahan pe ek domain form hote hain ferromagnetic material having the domain and ye jo wall the je jo do domain capacity the domain and because of this domain wall motion they gives the magnetic on the picture of magnetic field when never we are reducing the size what happens when this domain get reduced then the size reduces only domain kya hoga reduce hoga and again if you are reducing the size again it is reduced where the domain wall formation is unfavorable because the particle is very small so it can be uh, assigned in a one one uh, one so single domain so earlier you are having number of domain but now you are having single domain so to orient a single domain now you have to orient this complete single domain here you have to orient only a particular domain wall okay if it's still a single domain wall is rotated then uh, then uh, one domain it will uh, decrease its magnetization but here you have to rotate this complete single domain so it requires a large coercivity hence the coercivity increases with the decreasing the coercivity kya ho rahi hai aapki increase ho rahi hai with decrease in particle size aur phir particles aapko agar aap reduce karte ho then uska ferromagnetic behavior loss ho jayega then it become super ferromagnetic okay the small particles are more magnetic than the full particles because of the reduction in the domain size okay so in this way the magnetic properties of the inner material are changing तो दिस इज दी स्ट्रेस इज लू अगर आप फेरोमैग्नेटिक मैग्नेटिक गियर आपने किया होगा सो दिस का इट इज दी सेचुरेशन दिस इज दी रिटेंसिविटी एंड दिस इज दी कोसिविटी कोसिविटी मीन्स टू मेक मैग्नेटाइजेशन जीरो वी आर अप्लाइंग अ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इन अपोजिट डायरेक्शन ओके सो इट रिक्वायर्ड अ लार्ज टेम्परी सो विच डिक्रीजिंग पार्टिकल साइज दिस कोसिविटी इज डिक्रीजिंग एंड दिस एरिया अंडर दिस कर अगर आप बोलेंगे कि हमको तो ज्यादा मैग्नेटिक फील्ड लग रही है तो फिर वाई वी आर मूविंग टूवर्ड्स दी नैनो मटेरियल बिकॉज टू वाइड दिस एरिया ये जो स्टेरिस लुक बोलते हैं स्टेरिस लुक का एरिया जितना लार्ज होगा तो इट कैन बी यूज फॉर स्टोरेज एप्लीकेशन उतना डेटा उतने लॉन्गर टाइम के लिए क्या होगा स्टोर होगा तो फॉर दैट स्टोरेज एप्लीकेशन वी रिक्वायर्ड अ लार्ज पोर्सिटिविटी हाई रिटेंटिविटी लार्ज सेचुरेशन ऑल ऑफ दिस थिंग्स वी आर इंक्रीजेस With the decrease in particle size, the mechanical properties are is also changing with respect to the size of the nanoparticles. Uh, just uh, because of the nanoparticles having super plastic material, you can see that with the change in the grain size, with the increase in grain size, the Young's modulus is increasing. Okay, so 
<coughs> because of the nano size, many mechanical properties such as hardness, elastic modulus, structure, toughness, stress resistivity, fatigue cell can be modified. And all of these things we are attributed to the reduction of particle size and high surface to volume rate. Mechanical properties ke liye surface properties we are responsible hai. Uh, high volume surface to volume ratio and uh, electrical and optical properties ke liye quantum size effect is very important. Okay. Then uh, we have seen one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional materials, fluorine, different shape of material. Among them, there are some special type of material which are known as the geolites. So what is geolites? Geolites are the crystalline microporous material. They are, they are having a continuous network. They are crystalline but they are having some force. Okay, so geolites are the crystalline microporous material. Uh, they, uh, they they are they are consist of some aluminum silicate, loose water, and to form a porous structure with large surface area. These aluminum silicates are called as the geolites, and these geolites are also known as permutic. Okay, and com chemical composition is like this: Mn X by N. SI 1 minus X ALX O2 dot YH2, where M is a, can be your sodium, potassium, lithium, silver, or NH2. H, okay. So, different depending upon different M, you can synthesize, you can synthesize different type of geolite. Okay, so we can say that geolites are hydrated aluminum silicate minerals made from interlinked tetrahedra of alumina and silica. There are two types of geolites, natural geolites, synthetic geolites. So naturally, naturally geolites are about 40 naturally occur geolites in which occurs naturally. Okay. They are non-porous and forming it both volcanic and sedimentary rock. naturally geolites? Volcanic and sedimentary rock. And most commonly mine forms include the sabazite, clinoptitlite, Modernite and natrolite. Okay, these types of these all these are the naturally appear occurring geolites. Okay, they have wide application in cation exchange, ion exchange, adsorption, water softeners, dehydration and rehydration, biological activity, and excellent catalytic or catalytic activity. Another type of geolites are the synthetic geolites. Synthetic means we are fabricating them in a lab. The synthetic geolites, also called molecular fuse, are crystalline aluminum silicate manufacturer in a thermal process. It possesses porous structure. They are heat prepared by heating. If we heat China, feldspar and soda ash simultaneously heat karte, then it produces synthetic geolites. Okay. So there are around 150 synthetic geolites which are designed for specific purpose. And this is commonly known as zeolite A for laundry detergent, zeolite X and Y for uh, use for catalytic cracking and petroleum catalyst ZSM5 which is a branded name for pentacyl zeolite. Okay. There are 150 synthetic zeolites which can be prepared in lab by heating together china clay, fat par and soda ash. Then another type of zeolite is the nanoporous zeolite. So, it is consists of regular organic or inorganic framework and which supporting a regular porous structure. And these porous, the uh, pores hai, they are having the dimension in the range of 1 is to 1, 10 is to power 7 to 2 into 10 is to power minus 9 meter. And this non porous zeolites can be subdivided as microporous material, me mesoporous material and macroporous material. Classification is just based on the dimension. If you are having the dimension of 0.2 to 2 nanometer, they call as a macroporous material. If the pores having the dimension of 2 to 50 nanometer, it is mesoporous material. If they are having the dimension of 50 to 1000 nanometer, they are called as the macroporous material. So, GLS having vast application in animal feed, pet litter, in water purification as well as in water control. They can be used in fungicide or pesticide carrier, they can be used as a catalyst, they can be used in horticulture and they can be used in aquaculture. Okay, so these are the uses of geolite. Another type of nanomaterial which we are using is the graphene. Graphene is the basic structural element of carbon allotropes. Graphene kya hai aapke? Carbon ka allotropes hai. 
जस्ट लाइक जैसे आपके कार्बन स्केलेट ऑफ कौन कौन से ग्राफी चारकोल कार्बन एनोट्रोस एंड क्लोरिन ग्राफिन इज अ बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर एलिमेंट ऑफ कार्बन एलोटो ओके सो इट इज कंसिडर्ड और इट इज विजुअलाइज एज अटोमिक स्केल एज अ चिकन वायर इट इज अ चिकन वायर मेड अप ऑफ कार्बन एटम्स एंड देयर बॉन्ड ओके एंड द क्रिस्टलाइन फॉर्म ऑफ ग्राफिक कंसिस्ट ऑफ मेनी ग्राफिन शीट व्हिच आर स्टैक्ड टुगेदर सो व्हाट इज ग्राफिन इज अ वन एटम थिक प्लेनर शीट What is graphene? One atom thick planar sheet of carbon atoms that are densely packed in a honeycomb crystal lattice. They can be like this: stack. It can be stack graphene, graphene sheet, stack graphene. They can be wrapped graphene, or they can be rolled graphene. Graphene is a one atom thick planar sheet of carbon atoms that are densely packed in a honeycomb crystal lattice. Okay. we can say the graphic itself consists of many graphene sheet stack together and the carbon carbon bond length in graphene is approximately 0.142 nanometer how we can produce the graphene graphene can be produced in solid form uh, and it is most of the most expensive material on the earth it can be synthesized by uh, by using the the exfoliation of graphite crystal if you use three dimensional graphite crystal form exfoliation that is exfoliation means repeated peeling we are using ultrasonic treatment a repeated study so that each from this theory humne abhi bataya tha graphite aapka kya tha graphite is a consist of many graphene sheet ab hum uske continuous peeling karenge yani one by one usko usko se break karenge exfoliation karenge so that usme se jo graphite sheet thi wo layer by layer kya hoti jayengi separate hote jayenge so graphene can be synthesized by exfoliation of cd graphite crystal or it can be synthesized by using a silicon carbohydrate to higher temperature jab higher temperature pe hum silicon carbohydrate ko rod ko heat karenge then it can be reduced to graphene form and higher temperature is near about 1100 degree celsius Uh, the what are the properties of graphene graphene has a vast application because of its properties its properties it having high resistivity of the order of 10 to the power minus 6 ohm cm inverse young's modulus is of the order of 0.5 and is the strongest surface is your graphene so 0.5 tetra pascal the interesting properties which lead to the possibility of graphene for nano electronic material Okay, so it can be used as a nano electronic material, as a pressure sensor and resonator because of its intrinsic properties. Graphene having high strength. Okay, so it is a perfect sample of the material with a uh, sharp probe made up of diamond. The hardness we are tested at the Columbia University, and it shows that high hardness uh, strength of the graphene sheet. And uh, in earlier example, as we have seen, then graphene sheet having high strength. Oxidizing the graphic graphene flakes, and then they are floating in a water. The graphene flakes form a single sheet. Okay, and which is called as the graphene oxide paper. So there is a large impact of nano science uh, and nano technology. It includes a contribution from professional in a variety of industries and discipline, including science, law, business, health, government regulation, and policy. covers and nanotechnology covers a, an area of increasing research and funding more research we are going and funding was provided if you are working in the nano material field there are vast application of nano materials in engineering it can be used in material technology it can be used in biomedical application most commonly used energy storage application they can be used in food business they can be used in textile industry 
there are large number of application of nanomaterials in engineering the application of nanomaterial technology in food industry is that it can be used for gelatin agent to improve the food texture they can be used as a np caking agent to improve the consist uh, consistency and prevent the lump formation they can be used in food packaging or smart packaging just like our jo wrappers hote hain hamare wrappers ke inside jo nano materials ki coating hoti hai so why to nano biosensor for pathogen detection they can be used for active packaging so nano particle as np microbial agent and it improves the packaging to improve the physical performance of a food nano technology has a vast application in textile okay nowadays we are wearing a shirt which is wrinkle free and it is possible because of the nano material because nano material we are fabricate a shirt which is wrinkle resistant we are wearing a shirt which doesn't absorb the water which are having the properties of water repellent it is possible how how it is possible because of the nano technology and nano material we can design a material, material which having a shirt or a cloth which is having a antibacterial or odor control okay we can design a material or a fabric which having uv blocking properties Yeah, which having high strength, which having anti-static properties, or which shows the optical display. Okay, so any this type of uh, any this type of fabric is possible because of the nanotechnology in textiles. So textiles they are using the uh, technology nanotechnology to make their fabric more impressive. Nano materials can be in the thin form, can be used for surface coating, or they can be used for hydrophobic coating. Hydrophobic coating it means they do not absorb the water on the surface. They are having the water repellent properties. So these are the various application of nano materials. Our nano world may be consist of our home. In our home, we can use the nano solar cell. We can use the nano tiles. In our car, we are having a fuel cell. all of this technique now we are surrounding with a nano material and it is uh, our life is make easier because of the nano technology okay thank you from my side i am on if you are having any question we are student you are welcome yes dear students if you feel uh, you have any doubt any questions related to nano technology You may feel free to put your question in the chat box. As if there is no questions, it means that the topic was very interesting, and you have explained the topic in a very simple and lucid way. There may be two probability, ma'am. Either they understand everything, or they are they are not understanding anything. <laughs> Right, ma'am. Uh, I always think the positive side. They must have understood everything. Henceforth, that they don't uh, have you. any question to ask. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Shahin Sayed, ma'am, uh, for taking out your, uh, giving your precious time, and you are just uh, scratching away the time from your busy schedule. And indeed, we are really very much honored that you have. Uh, explained uh, the topic in such a simple way indeed i was also listening to the topic and uh, 80% of the same topic has been there in our subject chemistry as well so you have explained the working the manufacture you can see the synthesis part and the application part in a very simple and a beautiful way the presentation was really very beautiful uh, thank you so very much ma'am uh, so on behalf of department of science and humanities and management of anjuman college of engineering and technology along with our principal sir uh, would like to thank you once again for uh, being a part of this guest lecture thank you so very much ma'am okay thank you thank okay. you dear students uh, the feedback link will be shared with you in your whatsapp group okay thank you ma'am that's all we have okay okay ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am you can thank you thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you goodness